This is Land of Havilah, 1 Kings 20a. In the last chapter, Yahweh told Elijah to anoint Haziel, king of Syria, Jehu, king of Israel, and Elisha as prophet. But it's going to take a while for any of these new players to rise up to the point of relevancy. Meanwhile, Israel still has Ahab as king, and Syria still has Ben-Hadad. Verse 1. Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his army together, and there were thirty-two kings with him, with horses and chariots. He went up and besieged Samaria and fought against it. Comment. Ben-Hadad came from Damascus with thirty-two allied kings and set siege to the city of Samaria. What will be the outcome of the siege? Verse 2. He sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city and said to him, Thus says Ben-Hadad, Your silver and your gold is mine. Your wives also and your children, even the best, are mine. The king of Israel answered, It is according to your saying, My lord, O king, I am yours and all that I have. Comment. Ahab agrees to give his wives, children, silver, and gold to Ben-Hadad. Back in Leviticus chapter 26, Yahweh described two alternative outcomes for Israel. If Israel would keep the covenant, they'd be safe, secure, and prosperous. They would lie down with no one to make them afraid, Leviticus 26.6. So the current situation is a sign of the times. Israel hasn't kept the covenant by a long shot, and they're in a desperate situation. So Ahab agreed with Ben-Hadad's first message, but now Ben-Hadad is going to increase his demands, verse 5. The messengers came again and said, Ben-Hadad says, I sent indeed to you, saying, You shall deliver me your silver and your gold and your wives and your children, but I will send my servants to you tomorrow about this time, and they will search your house and the houses of your servants. Whatever is pleasant in your eyes, they will put in their hand and take it away. Comment, tomorrow Ben-Hadad will send men to ransack all the houses in Samaria, including the palace. Verse 7, Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Please notice how this man seeks mischief, for he sent to me for my wives and for my children and for my silver and for my gold, and I didn't deny him. All the elders and all the people said to him, Don't listen and don't consent. Therefore he said to the messengers of Ben-Hadad, Tell my lord the king, All that you sent for to your servant at the first I will do, but this thing I cannot do. The messengers departed and brought him back the message. Comment. Ahab told Ben-Hadad he won't agree to Samaria being ransacked, but he still agrees to the first demand. He said, quote, All that you sent for at the first I will do, end quote, meaning he's still willing to depart with his wives, children, silver, and gold. Verse 10, Ben-Hadad sent to him and said, The gods do so to me and more also, if the dust of Samaria will be enough for handfuls for all the people who follow me. Comment, Ben-Hadad says, It's on. Your wives, children, silver, and gold are for me, but I've got lots of men following me. They're not going to be satisfied with handfuls of dust. They deserve some plunder too. Verse 11, The king of Israel answered, Tell him, Don't let him who puts on his armor brag like he who takes it off. Comment. Ahab's not generally a heroic figure, but that was an epic response. Don't let him who puts on his armor brag like he who takes it off. In other words, anyone can put on armor, but the point is to live long enough to take it off. So Ahab's saying, we don't surrender, we'll fight. Verse 12. When Ben-Hadad heard this message as he was drinking, he and the kings in the pavilions, He said to his servants, Prepare to attack. They prepared to attack the city. Comment. Solomon said kings shouldn't drink. They've got too much responsibility to let their judgment be clouded. Proverbs 31, 4 and 5. And Proverbs 20, verse 1, quote, Wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. Ben-Hadad's ready to brawl. Meanwhile, a nameless prophet's about to come to Ahab. Ahab has not consulted Yahweh on anything so far. He's only consulted his advisors, but Yahweh is going to do him the mercy of coming to him. Verse 13. Behold, a prophet came near to Ahab, king of Israel, and said, Yahweh says, Have you seen all this great multitude? Behold, I will deliver it into your hand today. Then you will know that I am Yahweh. Ahab said, By whom? He said, Yahweh says, By the young men of the princes of the provinces. Then he said, Who shall begin the battle? He answered, You. 
comment. Yahweh says, Ahab, you will be victorious. Ahab said, oh, really? Is there another army coming to save me? Who's going to give me the victory? That's what he meant when he said, by whom? He doesn't imagine he can win with just his little force. But Yahweh says the victory will come by his own regional officials commanding their own men. As far as the battle plan, he says, don't wait on Ben-Hadad to attack the city. Go on the attack yourself. Verse 15. Then he mustered the young men of the princes of the provinces, and they were two hundred and thirty-two. After them he mustered all the people, even all the children of Israel, being seven thousand. Comment, only seven thousand verses, as Yahweh put it, all this great multitude. Verse 16. They went out at noon, but Ben-Hadad was drinking himself drunk in the pavilions, he and the kings, the thirty-two kings who helped him comment, all the kings are drinking in their field headquarters, and Ahab's come out on the attack. Verse 17, the young men of the princes of the provinces went out first, and Ben-Hadad sent out, and they told him, saying, men are coming out from Samaria. Comment, the report to Ben-Hadad is that Israelites are coming out of the city. Verse 18, he said, if they have come out for peace, take them alive, or if they have come out for war, take them alive. Comment, he says, no matter what their intentions, take them alive. He thinks they might be coming out to surrender, and if they intend to fight, he thinks he's strong enough to subject, subject them to servitude without killing them. So he's very confident. Verse 19. So these went out of the city, the young men of the princes of the provinces, and the army which followed them. They each killed his man. The Syrians fled, and Israel pursued them. Then Hadad, the king of Syria, escaped on a horse with horsemen. The king of Israel went out and struck the horses and chariots and killed the Syrians with a great slaughter. Comment. Israel killed many of them, and when they began to run, they chased them and killed more. But Ben-Hadad got away by horse. Battle over, Ben-Hadad went home. Ahab didn't do anything to deserve victory, but Yahweh's being patient with him. Yahweh already instructed Elijah to anoint Jehu as king of Israel, but... If we review the exact wording, he didn't say Jehu would be king immediately, or even that he would be the next king, 1 Kings 19.16. As we remember from 1 and 2 Samuel, Yahweh anointed David king, but it was many years before David actually took the throne, and that's what's happening here with Jehu. The same's true for Ben-Hadad. We know at some point Hazael will assume the throne of Syria, but we don't know when. And we don't know when Elijah's ministry will give way to Elisha's. Now, back in Samaria, the same nameless prophet who prophesied during the siege has another message for Ahab, verse 22. The prophet came near to the king of Israel and said to him, Go, strengthen yourself, and mark, and see what you do, for at the return of the year the king of Syria will come up against you. Comment. According to the NET Bible translation notes, we know it's the same nameless prophet because of the use of the definite article, the prophet, not a prophet. He says, Ben-Hadad will come back at the turn of the year, which means at the start of the new year, which is spring on the Hebrew calendar, March or April. Meanwhile, back in Damascus, Ben-Hadad has advisors also. Verse 23, The servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their god is a god of the hills, therefore they were stronger than we. But let's fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they. Do this thing. Take the kings away, every man out of his place, and put captains in their place. Muster an army like the army that you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. We will fight against them in the plain, and surely we will be stronger than they are. He listened to their voice and did so. Comment. Ben-Hadad listened to his advisors. He's planning on returning in the spring, as the prophet in Samaria said he would. But this time he's going to replace the 32 kings in the field with bona fide military commanders, and he's going to draw Israel to battle on the plain, because Yahweh isn't the God of the plain, his advisors say. So Ben-Hadad thinks his problem is strategic and not a matter of Yahweh's favor. Round 2 of Ahab versus Ben-Hadad coming up at 1 Kings 20b at landofhavilah.net. 1 Kings 20b.